Welcome to Top World Trendings. Before we can start today's videos, hit the like button right now so we can make 1000 likes to this video. Please subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so every time we post you get a notification from YouTube. Share this video within your friends and don't forget to leave your opinion in the comment section. Thank you very much. Top Traders Announcement Stalls All Nation Finally finished. The most infamous imposters in history. Before we can start this amazing uh, video for you, I will encourage all of you to watch this video until the end and share your opinions related to the subject at hand in the comment section. This will help us ensure a vibrant and active community of like-minded people. Thank you very much. And now let's start with the most infamous imposters in history. Number 1. Wilhelm Voigt. On October 16, 1906, a German captain walked into an army barracks in Berlin and commandeered 10 soldiers who accompanied him by train to the town of Kopenix, east of the capital. There the Capon captain placed the mayor and the treasurer under arrest for embezzlement and confiscated over 4,000 marks from the local treasury as evidence. At first, this sounded like a typical corruption bust, but there was a catch. The army captain was just some guy dressed in uniform who changed in his civilian clothes and left with the money. His name was Wilhelm Voigt. In his late 50s at the time, he had spent half his other life in and out of prisons for various crimes. In 1906, he assembled a full captain's uniform by buying various parts from different shops around Berlin. He looked, walked and talked like an officer, and for German soldier that was enough apparently. They followed his orders without question, even the sergeant who allowed his men to travel with Void. Number 2. John Daedras. On the day, one day in 1318, a one-eared man walked into Beaumont Palace in Oxford and declared himself to be the true Edward II and therefore the rightful King of England. This man's name was John Daytras, sometimes recorded as John of Powerham, and all we know about his past is that he worked as a clerk and may have been the son of a tanner. According to his story, though, he was actually the son of Edward I, better known as Edward Longsharks. However, when he was an infant, a sow bit off his ear while he was playing in the castle courtyard. Fearing that she would be severely punished for her carelessness, his nanny substituted him with another boy from the village who ended up becoming Edward II of England. Number 3. Fred de Mara Known as the Great Impostor, Fred de Mara adopted numerous identities and spent most of his lifetime pretending to be someone else. Some of his alter egos included a psychologist, a biologist, a law student, a Trappist monk, a teacher, a dean of philosophy, a prison warden, and most shocking of all, a naval surgeon who actually performed medical procedures during the Korean War. It won't surprise you to learn that he, we don't know a lot of accurate information about the lifelong swindler as most of the details surrounding him were provided by Dimara himself after he sold his story to Life magazine. He was born Fernandino Waldo de Mara in 1921 in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Allegedly, he had a very high IQ and a photogenic memory, 
which helped him take one identity that often requires a higher education. His family started off rich, but lost it all during the Great Depression, which convinced the teenager Demara to run away from home and embark on his life as a professional imposter. Number 4. Defaults Dimitris The end of the 60th century brought a succession crisis in Russia known as the Time of the Troubles. It started in 1598 after Theodore I died without heirs. This prompted the appearance of several pretenders to the throne, all known as false Dmitri, because they all claimed to be the same person. Tsarevich Dmitri Ivanovich, the youngest son of Ivan the Terrible. The real Dmitri died in 1591, when he was only 8 years old, under controversial circumstances. He was killed by a stab wound. Some say he was assassinated, other than the young prince accidentally stabbed himself during a seizure. A few years later, a third story arose, purporting that the alleged assassins killed a different boy while the real Dimitri was hiding away, waiting for the opportune time to return. This version opened the door for people to come forward as the rightful heir to the throne. Well, dear friends, as always, in the second part of the video, I will um, present my personal opinion about the subject. I am also encouraging you, the viewers, to share your opinions about these four amazing subjects. Uh, Wilhelm Voigt, John Dedras, Fred Demara, and the false Dimitris, related to the most infamous impostors in history. Only by sharing your opinions, we will create a great and vibrant community here on our channel. Thank you very much. Well, my opinion will be related in general to impostors, and I think that to be an impostor, you need to have a mind a brilliant mind. Was that? Because in order to keep all the lies and all the appearances, you need to have a bright mind to make connections, to, to be able to suggest people what you want the image to be shown in front of them. And this takes a lot of cleverness, this takes a lot of um, important um, eyesight and uh, I think those persons like Wilhelm Voigt, John Dedras, uh, Fred de Maura and also the false Dimitris were persons that had the ability of presenting themselves as the person or the persona that they wanted to interpret.